Air travel is more intricate than most people realize. And with that complexity comes a number of hidden truths that airlines would prefer to keep from the general public. However, we're aware of them. Here are 20 flight secrets that airlines would rather you not find out. Airplane water tanks are full of bacteria. There are plenty of reasons you might decline a cup of tea or coffee on a plane, starting with the fact that it's often not the most enjoyable drink you'll have that day. But now there's an even bigger reason to say no. Your hot drink could contain traces of fecal matter. Research from the NYC Food Policy Center at Hunter College suggests it's best to steer clear of tap water on planes, which includes beverages like coffee and tea made with it. According to Professor Charles Placken from the center, the water tanks on planes aren't cleaned regularly. They're typically just refilled between flights, meaning old water remains mixed with new. While this is one expert's view, the data supports it. The Environmental Protection Agency found that 12% of commercial planes had tap water containing fecal bacteria. Despite claims by some airlines that they use advanced ozone disinfection methods several times a year, many passengers remain skeptical. It might be wise to switch to bottled water next time you fly. Your smartphone won't bring down the plane. Seasoned frequent flyers are familiar with the routine. Stow your bags, sit down, buckle up, and power off your mobile devices. It becomes second nature. But why do we actually turn off our devices? The common belief is that leaving them on could cause the plane to crash. However, there's no solid evidence to support the idea that mobile phones or other electronics interfere with an aircraft systems. In fact, the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, commissioned a study in 1992 to investigate this, and no interference with flight systems was found. The RTCA, which conducted the study, even suggested that music players, gaming devices, and laptops could be safely used. Still, as a precaution, they recommended turning off electronic devices during takeoff and landing. The study also examined reports from the 1990s where flight crews claimed devices caused issues like instrument display malfunctions, uncommanded roles, and autopilot disconnections. These problems were never successfully replicated. Although wireless devices emit signals, their design makes it unlikely they would interfere with aircraft communication or GPS systems. So why the need to turn them off or switch to airplane mode? The main concern is potential interference with ground networks, which is enough for the Federal Communications Commission FCC, and FAA to maintain the rule. Take swift action when your flight is canceled. There are many reasons your flight could be canceled, such as bad weather, staffing shortages, mechanical issues, or even overbooking. While missing your flight can be frustrating, it's crucial to stay calm and act quickly. If you think your flight may be canceled, try to get as close to the service desk as possible. Being near the front of the line increases your chances of speaking to an agent quickly and rebooking another flight. If you can't get a good spot in line, join the queue and call the airline simultaneously. Sometimes, you'll get faster help by contacting their international call center, which can handle requests from anywhere. Additionally, signing up for free text alerts can notify you of cancellations before you leave home, saving you an unnecessary trip to the airport. This also allows you to reschedule your flight from home. If you're already at the airport, self-service kiosks are another option. Just scan your boarding pass to change flights and print a new pass. It's not always the plane. Food's fault. Almost every frequent flyer has had a less than pleasant experience with airplane food and drinks. You might notice that the food seems bland or even that simple items, like fruit, don't taste as good as usual. While it's tempting to blame the caterers or flight crew, the real cause might be something else, at least when it comes to flavor. Several factors can dull your ability to taste sweet and salty foods, including the dry air, cabin pressure, and even the background noise on the plane. Caterers are well aware of this and often adjust their recipes to compensate for the diminished taste. Interestingly, studies show that your sense of taste can decrease by up to 30%, so a typically salty bag of peanuts might seem only mildly salted during a flight. But it's not always that simple. Our taste perception varies depending on the ingredients. For instance, flavors like lemongrass and curry can become more intense in the air, while others, such as garlic and cinnamon, are relatively unaffected. There are hidden objects in planes. Airplanes may seem pretty straightforward with seats, storage, a cockpit, and bathrooms, but there's a lot more going on behind the scenes. For instance, planes are equipped with a defibrillator in case of a medical emergency, 
as well as supplemental oxygen for emergencies like fires. If there's a fire, you might see a flight attendant rushing down the aisle with a fire extinguisher. These are standard safety features, but did you know many planes also carry handcuffs to restrain unruly passengers? There's also an axe or crowbar on board, though that's definitely not intended for passengers. In addition to these tools, there are hidden features you might not notice, like the discreet handrails built into the overhead bins that flight attendants use to steady themselves as they walk the aisle. Some planes even have secret sleeping compartments for the crew to rest during long flights. And those tiny holes in the windows? They're there to prevent pressure imbalances. Pilots are tired and scared. When we board a plane, we place our full trust in the pilots, expecting them to get us safely to our destination. Most of us feel confident in their skills, but should we? Some alarming studies suggest pilots are often exhausted, and they themselves are worried about how fatigue could affect their ability to, well, keep the plane from crashing. The most unsettling part is that these studies on commercial pilots were conducted back in 2016, and things may have worsened due to the COVID-19 pandemic. One study surveyed 7,239 commercial pilots in Europe, asking about their company's safety practices. Over half of the pilots felt that fatigue wasn't taken seriously at their workplace, and nearly 60% admitted to feeling tired on the job. Additionally, 38% said they had little trust in management when it came to safety concerns. You can get luggage compensation. Almost everyone knows at least one person who has experienced lost luggage on a flight. While this issue existed before the pandemic, it hasn't improved since. So, what are your rights if your baggage is lost, delayed, or damaged? You might not realize it, but you could be entitled to compensation. Most airlines provide reimbursement if your bag is missing for more than 24 hours. This usually covers essentials like toiletries and clothing for your trip, as well as compensating for any permanently lost items. Additionally, airlines often refund your checked baggage fee, which is the least they can do. Though policies vary, many airlines offer around $50 per day for the first five days of your luggage being lost. If your bag is never found, you'll need to give the airline an inventory of its contents to get compensated for its value. Airlines are generally liable for up to nearly $4,000, but the maximum liability for international flights is around $1,780. While some airlines may choose to offer more, they are not legally required to do so. Your flight attendants can nap. If you think flight attendants stay awake throughout the entire duration of a long-haul flight, think again. They need rest just like the passengers. Flight attendants on long flights have designated areas for sleeping, but they're tucked away in parts of the plane most passengers never see. These hidden sleeping quarters are often accessed through secret stairways, and in some cases, they resemble overhead bins. On any given flight, the crew might be sleeping either above or below you, ensuring they get the rest needed to stay alert and provide service for the entire journey. On long-haul flights, the crew is usually split into two shifts, one half works while the other takes a break. During their downtime, some sleep while others may simply relax, browse their phones, or unwind away from passengers. The size and comfort of their resting areas vary depending on the aircraft. For instance, on a Boeing 777, the crew has access to two spacious sleeping berths, business class style seats, and space for a sink, lavatory, or closet. Each bed is about six feet long, two and a half feet wide, and equipped with heavy curtains to block out noise. If you hear certain code words, you might be in trouble. Pilots and flight crews generally prefer not to alarm passengers unless it's absolutely necessary. Until that point, they often use code words and speak in low tones among themselves or with air traffic control to communicate about the situation without causing panic. While we're about to reveal some of these codes, knowing them might make you feel either privileged or a bit uneasy. The three most critical transponder codes for emergency situations are 7500, 7600, and 7700. If a pilot uses code 7500, they're discreetly informing air traffic control of a potential hijacking or unlawful interference without alerting the person responsible, who may remain unaware. Code 7600 indicates a communication or radio failure, but this would typically only be useful if there's still some form of contact with ATC. Finally, code 7700 is used for a general emergency, which could involve any situation that requires immediate attention. 
Pilots are advised to use this code in any serious or developing emergency. Cabin lights are dimmed so that you can see in the dark. When traveling at night, you may notice that the cabin lights are dimmed during takeoff and landing. While it might seem trivial since the pilot doesn't rely on these lights to operate the aircraft, this practice is actually for our safety and benefit. A senior pilot explains that dimming the lights helps our eyes adjust to the darkness, which is crucial in case of an emergency. If the cabin lights were fully on and then suddenly turned off, many passengers would have difficulty seeing and might struggle to find a safe exit. Research indicates that it can take our eyes up to 30 minutes to adapt to a dark environment, which is far too long in an emergency situation. Additionally, with the cabin dark, emergency lighting and illuminated pathways become much easier to see. This is also why flight attendants ask you to raise your window shades. They want your eyes to acclimate to the varying light conditions as much as possible. You might have rights if your travel vouchers expire. Houses travelers found themselves unable to take trips they had booked and paid for. Naturally, one would expect a cash refund, but despite being a federal law requirement, this wasn't always the case. Many airlines opted to issue travel vouchers, and those who canceled their flights on their own instead of waiting for the airline to do it were ineligible for cash refunds. Now, many individuals faced the issue of their travel vouchers nearing expiration, with some having no immediate plans to travel. Luckily, extending your voucher may be as simple as calling the airline. Many carriers, like American Airlines, are often willing to provide extensions, while others may have already set longer expiration dates on their vouchers. If your vouchers have expired and the airline isn't cooperating, you might consider filing a complaint with the U.S. Department of Transportation. Pilots don't eat the airplane food. If you're a pilot and your co-pilot orders a tempting dish during a flight, you might be out of luck. Many airlines have a policy that prohibits pilots from eating the same meal. While this might seem unreasonable, it's a precautionary measure in case the food causes food poisoning. If both pilots were affected, it could jeopardize the safety of the flight. To mitigate this risk, it's a common practice for one pilot to select a meal from the business class menu while the other chooses from the first class menu. Although food poisoning incidents on planes are rare, they do occur. For instance, in 1984, about 120 passengers on a British Airways Concorde flight contracted salmonellosis, resulting in one fatality due to complications. The pilot, who didn't consume the same food, remained unaffected, but at that time, no specific rules regarding meal choices were established. A similar incident occurred in 1975 on a Japan Airlines flight, where around 143 passengers suffered food poisoning from bad eggs. However, the jet-lagged pilot who chose a different dinner option was fine. While there are no formal regulations from aviation authorities about meal selections, most pilots take care to choose different dishes from their co-pilots. More tickets could mean higher price. In many industries, buying in bulk can often result in lower prices per item, but this isn't usually the case with airline tickets. You might find that tickets are advertised at a competitive rate when you're looking for just one or two, but that price can increase significantly when you're searching for, say, eight tickets for your family. This happens because there's a limited number of tickets available at each price point. For example, you might see a few tickets listed for $99, which could lead you to believe you can send your entire family on vacation for that price each. However, there may only be a small number of tickets at that price, and adding multiple tickets to your cart can push you into a higher price bracket. Fortunately, there are strategies to navigate this issue and potentially save some money. One option is to purchase tickets one at a time, although this may mean your travel group won't sit together. Alternatively, you could consider booking through a travel agency, which might be able to secure better deals than those available to you directly. You can still get a free upgrade. Free upgrades often seem like something out of a movie. You simply ask for one and it magically appears. Do you know anyone who has actually been upgraded to business or first class just by asking? It seems uncommon, but it is still possible to receive complimentary upgrades. The easiest way to secure an upgrade is, of course, to pay for it, but you might also be randomly selected for an upgrade if you are a valued frequent flyer or if you have high future potential with the airline. Additionally, if your flight has been canceled and the only available alternative flight has open seats in business class, you might be upgraded. Sometimes, a last-minute aircraft change can lead to upgrades, especially if the new plane has a smaller economy section but a larger business class. Lastly, 
overbooking can also result in upgrades. If the economy class is fully booked, some passengers may be upgraded to business class to ensure that everyone can reach their destination. You can bring your own food. Packing for a trip can be quite stressful, especially when you need to follow TSA regulations. If you travel frequently, you're likely familiar with the 311 liquid rule, which states that you can bring liquids in containers no larger than 3.4 ounces, all fitting into a single quart-sized zip-top bag. However, this doesn't mean you have to forego bringing food with you. You can take food on board as long as it adheres to the liquid restrictions. This means you can pack a variety of solid food items, provided they aren't liquids that violate the 311 rule. If you're feeling hungry, there's no reason you can't include cookies, crackers, bread, dried fruit, sandwiches, and even meat, seafood, and eggs in your carry-on. Interestingly, live lobsters are also permitted, as long as they are in clear, sealed, and spill-proof containers. That said, not all foods are permitted. Canned items can be challenging to bring through security, and condiments like salsa, dips, and cream cheese must also comply with the liquid regulations. Sometimes, it might just be easier to enjoy the food served on the flight and save a nice meal for when you land. Some days are cheaper to fly than others. It's only natural to look for the best deals when planning a getaway. If you want to save a significant amount on flights, it might be a good idea to rethink which days you take off work for your family vacation. Generally speaking, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday are some of the most affordable days to fly. If you're heading to Europe, weekdays are typically cheaper than weekends. Of course, the cost can vary depending on the airline and your specific routes, but there's no harm in experimenting with different travel dates to see how much you can save. USA Today analyzed flight prices and found that tickets from Boston to Las Vegas cost $500 on Friday and Sunday, while a Saturday or Wednesday flight was only $228. While it might seem convenient to travel at the end of the week for the weekend, the savings from shifting your plans could be substantial. After all, what's wrong with flying on a Wednesday? Plane surfaces have more germs than toilet seats. Most of us know that restrooms aren't typically the cleanest environments, regardless of how often they are cleaned. Bacteria and germs are always lurking in these spaces due to their nature. But did you know that the average surface on an airplane is even dirtier than toilet seats? If that doesn't make you want to slather on hand sanitizer after a flight, I'm not sure what will. For starters, let's talk about those tray tables, gross? A study conducted in 2015 found that tray table surfaces had over eight times the amount of bacteria per square inch compared to toilet flush buttons. Many of the tested trays showed the presence of cold viruses, norovirus, human par influenza viruses, and even the superbug MRSA, which is notorious for causing skin infections. The seatbelt buckles aren't much better either. Consider how many hands touch them in a single day. They had about 230 colony-forming units per square inch, while the air vents had 285 per square inch. If there's that much bacteria on seatbelt buckles and air vents, just imagine the mess in the bathrooms. Testing of airplane restrooms revealed the presence of fecal coliform and E. coli on flush handles, sinks, and toilet seats. Flight attendants are highly trained. Some individuals perceive flight attendants as little more than enhanced servers, equating their role to that of wait staff in a diner. However, this perception is far from accurate. Flight attendants are highly trained professionals with significant responsibilities. While they do cater to your needs, such as serving beverages and addressing inquiries, they also play a crucial role in maintaining order during emergencies and enforcing safety protocols. In fact, they are typically the last to leave an aircraft in emergency situations, often putting their own lives on the line to protect passengers. Flight attendants are trained to perform first aid, conduct pre-flight checks, instruct passengers on using emergency equipment, and make important announcements during boarding. The level of training required to become a flight attendant is extensive, all aimed at ensuring smooth operations, passenger safety, and overall satisfaction during the flight. According to a pilot on Quora, it's common for pilots to encounter both exceptional and mediocre flight attendants. The outstanding ones demonstrate the ability to follow emergency procedures and exercise good judgment. They are brave, focused, and intelligent, often needing to take charge during crises by issuing commands, taking bags from passengers, and directing them onto emergency slides to facilitate safe evacuations. It is possible to get refunds on non-refundable tickets, 
When you notice the price disparity between non-refundable and refundable airline tickets, it often seems obvious. Non-refundable tickets are significantly cheaper. But what if circumstances change and you can't travel? Will you lose both your ticket and your money? Not necessarily. In some instances, you might be fortunate enough to secure a refund from the airline, largely depending on how you handle the situation. Crafting a polite and positive email that outlines your circumstances could lead to a favorable outcome. The more courteous you are, the better your chances might become. Airlines may also grant refunds if you have a legitimate medical issue, if a travel companion passes away, if there's a change in military orders, or if there's a major alteration to the flight schedule. Additionally, if you find out within 24 hours of booking that you can't go, you could qualify for a flight credit or immediate refund. Of course, there's no guarantee that these approaches will yield results. Some airlines may simply deny your request. However, there's no harm in trying a kind approach to see if you can achieve a positive resolution. Alternatively, you might want to consider investing in a refundable ticket right from the start. Airlines and passengers have contracts. How often do you take the time to read the fine print on anything you sign? Whether it's the latest app you've downloaded or new software, it often feels lengthy, tedious, and, frankly, most of us likely skip over it. But you know it exists, and sometimes that's what counts. Did you realize that when you buy airline tickets, you're also entering into agreements and contracts with the airlines? By purchasing tickets, you consent to various terms, including limits on liability for lost or damaged baggage, restrictions on damage claims, and their liability rights regarding delays or service failures. Out of curiosity, it can be beneficial to review these legal terms, typically referred to as the contract of carriage, so you understand what you are agreeing to.